By now in this class, you have been introduced to the G-Ranges class from Genomic Ranges, and you have been introduced to Annotation Hub. And now we're going to take a use case or a little data analysis where we're going to put these different components together and show how easy we can uh, achieve certain simple analysis. The question we're going to try to answer in this use case is we're going to uh, study a histone mark called H3K4 trimethylation that is set to mark active promoters. If that's really the case, we should find a lot of this particular histone mark inside promoters of genes. We're going to uh, use ENCODE data on H3K4 trimethylation, and we're specifically going to use ENCODE data on a specific cell line called GM12878, which is a so-called tier 1 cell line from ENCODE. I just picked that more or less at random. The uh, H3K4 trimethylation uh, data has also been, has been uh, the experiment has been done by ENCODE, and we are going to use the analysis results from ENCODE. This is a chip-seq experiment, and the analysis result is a set of peaks on the genome where uh, it's believed that this particular histone modification is enriched. So the first part of this use case here is we're going to get the ENCODE data using Annotation Hub. So let's fire up Annotation Hub. Oh, that was the wrong one. and instantiate a, a hop. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we just deal with uh, um, human data. So we're going to subset the hop. We're going to say the species has to be equal to homo sapiens. Now, let's try uh, to start by searching for the histone modification data. Uh, let's do a query on the AHOP, and let's uh, use two search terms. We're going to use the histone uh, modification, H3K4 trimethylation, and we're going to use the name of the cell line that was GM12878. Let's store this so we can look at it. Okay, something came out. That's a good uh, start. We have 11 records, and now the question is, which of this data should we use? We can see in the printout that the data comes both from the Broad Institute and UCSC. And if we just look at the title, there seems to be two broad classes of titles, something starting with WG ENCODE and something starting with E116. Now... Uh, if you look on the internet a little bit and you try to Google these titles and you know a little bit about ENCODE data and UCSC, you'll recognize the first set of titles as coming from ENCODE data hosted at UCSC. The second set of titles, the one that started with E1116, had my, had, uh, got me a little confused. But I googled E116 and it turns out that E116 is uh, an internal ID from the Roadmap Epigenomics Project for this particular cell line, the GM12878 cell line. So basically, we have data here from ENCODE, and we have data from the Roadmap Project. The Roadmap Project is, is newer. It's probably uh, better processed, better analyzed, but I said in the beginning uh, I, was, I would analyze ENCODE data, so I'm going to stick with the ENCODE data. And now, the question is, which one of these data sets should I use? Uh, if you look at the name, you can see that it starts with W ENCODE, and then there's Broad and University of Washington. That's where the experiment was done. And then there's something with Replicate 1 and Replicate 2 and Broad Peak and Narrow Peak. And that's all a little bit confusing. I'm going to stick with University of Washington, and then I'm going to look at replicate one for the broad peak and replicate one on the narrow peak and see if I can make some sense out of it. So I'm going to get two genome ranges and I'm going to uh, get uh, the second element and I'm going to get the uh, fourth element. Let's have a look. So it's G ranges which makes sense. These are supposed to be peaks. 
and we have some coordinates in the genome, and we have some additional metadata. Uh, let's go up here. We have a name that seems to be missing everywhere. We have a score that at least for these ones here seems to be zero. And then we have something called signal value. A good guess is probably that higher signal value, more enrichment. <coughs> we're going to ignore that for the time being. Let's have a look at how big these peaks were. Remember, they were called broad peaks and narrow peaks. So let's do a summary of width of the uh, broad peaks. I think this was the broad peaks. And they seem to be have a median of 300, uh, 300 uh, about 400 bases, but some of them are really long. The longest is 22 kilobases. That's pretty broad for this type of histone modification, which is something I happen to know. Let's look at the other one, the narrow peak. And that looks a little extreme, right? The minimum and the third quantile of the distribution is 150. And if we do a table over the different widths, we'll see that essentially all the peaks have a width of 150 bases. Clearly something with the data processing has enforced this particular width on all the peaks. At this point in time, uh, one should spend some time thinking about which data do I want, uh, which should the source be, and so on and so forth. We're going to sidestep that discussion and just use the narrow peaks, the replicate one from the narrow peaks from University of Washington. So I'm going to read, that was GR2. I'm going to rename my G ranges uh, uh, peaks. And I'm just going to check, just to be sure, uh, what the uh, genome was for these things here. Let's see, this here was number uh, four. And you can see here that the genome was HG19. This is pretty important. If you can download uh, data from different genome versions using annotation hub, and if you're not careful, you're going to get weird uh, analysis out of it. Now, we're going to take these peaks and we're going to ask, do these pe are these peaks enriched in promoters? So in order to answer that question, we've got to get the promoters. Promoters are usually defined as a small interval, say 2kb or so, around the transcription start site of genes. So now we're going to get the transcription start site of transcripts of genes. The way to really do that in Bioconductor is to use something called a, tra a, a transcript database object or a TXDB object, which we haven't covered yet. So instead, I'm going to get gene annotation from uh, f using annotation hub, and I'm specifically going to go for a specific type of gene annotation called RefSeq. RefSeq is a highly curated set of uh, validated genes. We have very high confidence in them. We know that there are a lot of them. We know are protein coding. We have a lot of information about them. But uh, it's also very limited in the sense that for most RefSeq genes, we only have a single transcript or a single isoform uh, uh, in the database. We're going to see that. Don't take my word for it. OK, so we're going to look at annotation hub for RefSeq. Let's do a query. And let's save the query so we can look at it. And let's just look for RefSeq. OK, this is promising. We have eight data sets. Some are called RefSeq genes, and some are called other RefSeq. And given what we are attempting to get, it's probably a good guess that we want to go for the RefSeq genes. But why are there four data sets with the exact same title? That got me confused a little bit at first. And then I looked at the genome of these things here. And you basically have four sets uh, on four different versions of the human genome. From before, we knew that the peaks were in HG19, so we're also going to get uh, we're also going to get the RefSeq genes in HG19. That turns out to be the first data set. So let's download that uh, from our AHUB, from the QHS. We use the double bracket, so we download it. Here we have the genes. We have 50,000 genes or transcripts. Uh, and if we scroll up a little bit, 
we can see that each uh, row is a G ranges, not a G ranges list, or it's actually called a UCSC track, but it looks very much like a G ranges. We can see that each row has a single range associated with it, and, and a strand and a name. This is the outer coordinates of the transcripts, or the coordinates of the pre-mRNA of the transcript. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that there's a metadata thing called blocks, and these blocks here actually gives you the, the coordinates of the different exons in the, in the transcript. We don't really care about the different exons, we just need the start site, the transcription start site, which is the start of these uh, uh, single uh, 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 ranges uh, coordinates. Now, um, I said RefSeq was very conservative. The uh, name we have here is a RefSeq identifier which goes uh, at the gene level. So two transcripts from the same gene is going to have the same name. So we, we can use this to quickly check for how many transcripts do we have per gene in RefSeq. So we do that if we do a table over the genes dollar name. We are for each name we're gonna know how often does it occur. Then I can do a little trick. I can call table on this again, and then I get basically a distribution of how often I see a single transcript, how often I see two transcripts, and so forth. And as you can see in the output, by far most of the genes have a single transcript, and there's about 1,000 genes that has uh, multiple transcripts. Now, that was a little aside. Uh, we are going to get back to the promoters. Remember, genes can be both on the forward and the reverse strand, and depending on the strand, we want to get either end of the interval we have. Locally, in a bioconductor or in, in, a, in, 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 in genomic ranges, we have the convenience, we have a, have a convenience fun function called promoters. So I can just like call promoters on my things, and I get the promoters. Now, uh, where it respects the different strands. So it takes the start of the, of, of the transcript. Now, how wide are these uh, promoters? I said that it, it's a little open question exactly how wide you want to define a promoter. Uh, and it turns out that they're all exactly 2.2 kb. That's a choice. We can look at the arguments for the promoters function. And we can see that the default is to pick 2,000 bases upstream and, and 200 bases downstream of the, of the transcription start site. I'm just going to leave it as is and uh, continue. So now we have the, uh, uh, the promoters and we have the peaks and we are ready to ask, do we have some significant overlap? 